Well, good morning. It's good to see you. It's been a good week. Lots of green shoots coming up in the church and uh, things happening. It's good to see each one of you. Good to see Claire and Tony. I don't think they chose to be on the front here, <laughs> but you're right in my sight, okay. <laughs> Uh, we heard on Friday that because of illness, um, Denisa, uh, illness in his own, Denisa, who was due to speak, uh, was unable to speak this morning. Uh, and so we prayed about it, and uh, well, I did very much. Uh, and uh, I just felt I'd bring a, a message to you that God has laid on uh, my heart. You know, when we bring a message, it's easier when we get, it's easier when we get situations like this um, to reach out for one of your old messages. Uh, but I felt the Lord just restrained me from that. Uh, we need a message of what God has laid upon our heart for today. We need that now word, don't we? It's good to be taught it's good to get a better understanding of Scripture, uh, but in our lives we do need that now word, don't we? The Rema word. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we read that all Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for each one of us. And so before sharing with you from God's word, the first thing that I'd like to do is pray. Because before I ask God for a message, I, I need to really get on my knees and pray and seek his face. And so, Lord, just now we pray that uh, what you've given me to share will just touch hearts here and touch the hearts of those who are listening in other places. We just pray, Lord, that not by might or power or by a cleverness of words, but by your Spirit you will move upon us this day, in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. I've often said that when I pray, I speak to God. And when I read the Bible, I feel God speaking to me. And uh, you may remember that, but I'd encourage you to do the same every single day. Why? The psalmist said in Psalm 119, verse 105, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Trust in the Lord, it says in Proverbs, doesn't it? With all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Saruman, uh, carrying out some work, I'll just say someone, I won't mention his name, was carrying out work on my house this week. Uh, and he was commenting on the things that were happening in the world today. There's lots of opportunities to share good news of the gospel. So much despair and damage, awful things happening. And he said to me this, took me by surprise, He's not a Christian, he doesn't attend a church, I don't think he reads his Bible, but he said this to me, with all this going on in the world, he said, it's all in the Bible, you know. I said, well, that's interesting, it's all in the Bible, you know. It's amazing that he doesn't read the Bible. Even more amazing, friends, to me, often as a pastor of a church, that Christians neglect to read the Bible. Don't neglect to read the Word of God. Every day, look into this living Word, the Word of God. And God, I promise you, will speak to you every single day. I'd like to encourage you in your daily reading to turn to Matthew 24 and 25. It's good to read it, not just now, but it is good to turn to these two chapters uh, as we look at what's going on in this world. But in Matthew 24, verse 36, under the heading, Signs of the Ends of the Age, it says, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 
I want to declare this morning, you know, the obvious, God has set a time. He's not thinking about it. It's not guesswork with God. He has set a time. And we need to be prepared, don't we? And I believe that time is near. Uh, I think you believe it as well, because we're seeing the fulfillment of prophecy in Scripture almost every day. Jesus said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Keep on your toes. Don't neglect the gathering together of God's people. Don't neglect the reading of his word. He will speak to you and guide. Don't neglect to pray and to seek his face. He loves us. And we need to stay close to him. Because God has set a time. He has set a time. Jesus said, watch and pray. This is a time, church, isn't it, to tell people the good news about Jesus, to be ready and friends not to be left behind when Jesus comes back. What an awful thought to be left behind. Let's keep in our relationship absolutely true with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be in him and he in us. And let that relationship grow and glow in our hearts and in our lives. And as I was praying and meditating in preparation for this morning, the Holy Spirit brought a memory back to me. Many years ago, two young people from my youth group, so that just tells you how long ago it was, doesn't it? This is over in Kent. They gave me as a, a present a small picture and on this picture, it had a, a river winding its way through uh, the English countryside. I think you may have seen it uh, uh, on Facebook this morning. Unchanging in its direction, in its flow over the centuries. And the picture had these words superimposed from 2 Timothy 2, verse 13 taken from the King James at that time, it says, He abideth faithful. He abideth faithful. Hallelujah. So let, let's just take that in, friends. And in the NIV today, this verse reads, He will remain faithful. His word, his promises, friends, are unchanging. And you know, that was 45 years ago. And I was thinking those two young girls must be about 60 years of age now. Unbelievable. About the same age as me, I reckon. <laughs> but let me read to you from 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 2, verse 11. Here is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful. He will remain faithful. It gives me hope, these words, friends. You know, some people have drifted away and are not walking with God as they used to or are in a different place. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful for he cannot disown himself. Wow, that's a word of God for us, isn't it? For everybody. And you know, at, these, uh, at that time, rather, 45 years ago, I estimate it to be these two young people uh, just to, let me just say this, I was youth leader then and there was just a handful of young people and then one day I sat there and there were over 40 young people. I couldn't boast because I couldn't remember where they all came from but they'd given their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and it was out of their experience baptised in water, baptised in the Spirit, it was out of that they felt in their hearts to give me that picture that read, He abideth faithful. 
And at that time, these two young girls, they composed a song. So as I was praying this week, God just brought it back to me. And they composed a song which I believe the Holy Spirit had just quickened in their hearts. And the words are, I'll only read one part of it. The first sentence, if you like. Jesus is coming this way today. Today. And they would sing this song and it was absolutely beautiful. And I felt the Lord just quicken my heart for today. Jesus, friends, is coming your way. This is what I've, this conviction I have in my heart for all of you, but maybe especially for some of you. Jesus is coming your way today in this place. And wherever you are listening to this, Maybe on live stream, I don't know. He's not coming, friends, today to condemn you, but to save you, to minister to you, to bless you, and to give you a hope. Hallelujah. Today. Today. We read that Jesus said in John 3.16, I love to declare it. Friends, never get tired of declaring the words of Jesus. God so loved the world. And he still does today. That he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. A promise for today. Today. And in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 we read, For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. The Bible tells us now is the time of God's favor. Now, friends, is the day of salvation. And Jesus is passing this way today. Do you know, we can just sit and listen, or we can listen and put into action and reach out. Receive from him what we need today in this meeting. He doesn't want you to delay one minute. Friends, Jesus is coming back very soon. Maybe today. Friends, eternal life comes by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And that's the radical message of the gospel. And in 2 Timothy 13, we read, He abideth faithful. As the old hymn goes, let me read it to you. Can't, I, I think I got Rachel a bit nervous. I got out the redemption hymnal. Uh, it's number 135. Rachel, are you ready? Now we won't sing it, but let me read the words. Oh, how sweet the glorious message. Simple faith may claim. Yesterday, today, forever, he abideth faithful. Jesus is the same. Still he loves to save the sinful. Heal the sick and lame. Oh, today, friends, he's passing this way. Reach out and touch him. Cheer the mourner, still the tempest, glory to his name. Yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Do you know, it's been a busy week. Uh, and when I heard that Denise couldn't share this morning and I sought God, I'm thinking, oh Lord, just give me the strength and that anointing that we all need. And when I read those words, friends, I just feel so refreshed, so blessed. He abideth faithful. He remains faithful to you. Hallelujah to each one of you. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Again, he doesn't want you to delay by one minute. 2 Timothy 13, again, he abideth faithful. And then we read those wonderful words from that hymn. 
And you know, Jesus is always true to his word. He doesn't break his promises. I do occasionally, only by accident, don't I, Betty? Yes. I forget. I, I, I have one of the characteristics I like to think of the Lord. I, I, I have forgetfulness about me. I think some of you older, mature Christians will understand what I mean by that. But Jesus is true to his word. And the exciting thing today is impressed on my heart that he's passing this way today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is your need? Are you a Christian? If not, now is the moment. Now is the day of salvation. Are you in need of healing? Are you in despair? Are you depressed? Oh, he's here, friends, by his spirit. Do you believe that? Well, it says... It says so. In Hebrews 8 we read, God has said, Christians, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And then it goes on to say, so we say with a confidence, are you confident in him this morning, in those promises? Put up your hand if you're confident, I'm not going to look. I am. So we say with a confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. He remains faithful. And in verse 8 in this chapter we read, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. It's all in this wonderful book. Read all about it. Read it every day, friends. He remains faithful. Jesus said in John 6, Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. So if this morning things have collapsed in your life and you think, I I just can't reach out. I believe he's here, but he's not going to accept me because of what's happened this week. I tell you, Jesus said this in John 6, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. What a promise. When I came to him all those years ago, I wouldn't have blamed him for saying, there's better people than you. The greatest of sinners was the Apostle Paul. I used to think I was, but then he said he was, and I believed the word for the things that he did. I will never drive you away. Whatever's happening in your life, Jesus wants to minister to you here this morning. Jesus is passing this way today. In Luke chapter 18, we read of a a blind beggar uh, receiving his sight. And uh, maybe I could just read it to you. Uh, It says this, As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Do you know, sometimes I meet Christians who have lost their way, cannot see lost their vision, and spiritually, they're, it's as though they're beggars, you know, just looking for crumbs off the master's table. He's got something better for you than that, friends. And this man who was blind, when he heard the crowd going by, he asked, what was happening? And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Hallelujah. Let me declare in this place, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Hallelujah. And he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It says in scripture, friends, cry unto the Lord in your day of trouble and I will deliver you. Hallelujah. You getting your hand ready to just reach out? Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Friends, if you cry out this morning and if you start shouting and asking God to deliver you or whatever, we will not tell you ever to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him this amazing question, this blind man. He said, what do you want me to do for you? Wow. Lord, I want to see, he replied. 
Ask, seek, it will be given to you. He wants you to tell him, friends, what it is that you want. Jesus said to him, receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. And When all the people saw it, they also praised God. You know, God inhabits the praise of his people. And I want this to be a noisy place, sorry Malcolm, full of people praising God and rejoicing in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's this morning, because he who abideth faithful is passing this way. He put that in my heart in a special way today. What is in your life? What is the most important thing you want him to do for you? And you know immediately what that is. Others might not know, but you know. Is it salvation? Is it healing? Is it help in your circumstances? Jesus is passing your way today. Reach out this morning. Tell him your need. Ask. Seek. And you will find. <coughs> if you want to shout it out, then please do. Put faith in him over fear. Hope over despair. Now is the day of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. I enjoy God's favour, do you? If that's faded a bit, let's reach out and get that back. Now is the day of salvation. This is your opportunity. He's passing your way today. The blind man cried out. Some in scripture reached out. But let us pray. Let us believe. And let us receive. You know, one of the worship songs that Suzanne posted this morning was, Who You Say I Am. Marvellous song. Touch my heart before I got here. Who You Say I Am. Take time to listen to it. It will encourage you. Now, when God lays something upon your heart, which I've shared with you, if I then go on and share other stories and other things, they just fall to the ground. What we learn is to just say what he's given to us. And what he's given to us, I share with you. And remember this, he spoke to me first before he spoke to you. Let us close our eyes and bow our heads just now. What I've shared with you, I didn't make up. It's not some fantasy world that I've entered into. Jesus is true to his word, true to his promises. And this morning, he knows your need before you ask him, but faith is to ask, to reach out. And so just now, my eyes are closed, my head is bowed in this place and in other parts of the world maybe. The, one of the young girls that composed that song I shared with you and gave me that picture now lives in Australia. I don't know if she'll be listening to this message, but I just pray you'll be encouraged by what I've shared. But Lord, just now, we reach out to you. Let us reach out to him, friends. Physically, reach out. Reach out to him. Tell him all about it. Tell him your need. Question Jesus as, what do you want me to do for you? I want to receive my sight. I want you to help me, Lord, with my financial situation. Lord, I don't even know you as Saviour. I want to receive you as Lord and Saviour this morning. I have this illness. Lord, I reach out to you. 
You've given me a promise this morning. You're passing this way and I reach out. And I want you to heal me, Lord, of this pain that I feel. For what is happening to me physically, what is happening to me in my family, what is happening to me in my life, Lord, just now I reach out to you and receive the blessing, your favour, upon my life. In Jesus' name I ask it. And we ask it. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you all. It's good to see you. I keep saying that, but it is. It's so good to be back in the house of God, isn't it? And for those that are on the live stream where it's being recorded, God bless you too. God bless you. Reach out and touch him. God bless you.